of these drugs range from extreme, extreme anxiety and depression, <coughs> violent behavior, delusions, psychosis, hallucinations, rapid heartbeat, seizures, strokes, and even death. On September 1st of this year, the state law banning the use of sell, the use, sales, and possession of synthetic drugs went into effect. Um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Detective Aaron Crowell. Um, I'm going to brag on him a little bit. Uh, Mr. Crowell has worked for Baytown Police Department for 15 years. He is the president of the Baytown Municipal Police Association and vice president of the Texas Municipal Police Association. In November of last year, Aaron, in, conjun in conjunction with the city attorney, wrote a city ordinance banning the sale of synthetics in the city of Baytown. Um, this ordinance resulted in six local smoke shops closing down. Um, so that was something that was really huge. Um, Aaron was also a part of the Harris County Synthetic Marijuana Advisory Board um, that crafted the language of Senate Bill 172 and 173, which was sponsored by Senator Huffman and signed by the governor. Mr. Crowell testified on the bills and spoke in detail with representatives in favor of the bills. If it was not for Aaron and others like him, we would not have the state law banning synthetics. There is no doubt in my mind that because of Mr. Crowell, um, countless lives have been saved. Thank you. Howdy. How, how's everybody today? Good. So, again, I, I'm Aaron Kroll. I'm a, a detective with Baytown. Um, I work narcotics as well as some, some other things with the city. Um, what I've done is I've prepared a presentation today on the new laws that have gone into effect since September 1 on synthetics. And it's not just the synthetic cannabinoids, but it's also the synthetic cathinones or bath salts. And then some changes to uh, the, the law around LSD as well. Um, I did not go into a lot of detail in this presentation on the side effects, the, you know, the, the physical changes that this stuff can cause. But uh, I do have some information on it, and I believe that... Uh, our next speaker may be able to speak to that a little bit better than I can, but um, I'll have my contact information here. Uh, that way, if y'all do have any questions after the fact, you know, feel free to get a hold of me and let me know. Uh, and with that said, let's get started. So, <clears throat> synthetic drugs have become a large problem across the United States, starting around 2008 or so uh, is when synthetic, uh, the synthetic cannabinoids, the, the legal weed, the Kush, started appearing in the United States. Um, I can go into a lot of history on it, but suffice it to say, uh, the synthetic cannabinoids weren't ever intended to be ingested uh, as a drug. It was used to treat or used in research for cancer, uh, starting in the mid '80s. But synthetics also encompass, um, you know, LSD and then, the, like I said, the bath salts, the synthetic cathinones. Um, as far as the law is concerned, we classify these drugs into penalty groups. So penalty group 1, 2, and 2A is what we're specifically going to be speaking about today. Um, and let me also say, before I get into the meat of it, there is a lot of misconception and misunderstanding out there about what synthetic drugs are, uh, if they're illegal or not, and then what the penalties are. And part of that is our fault as law enforcement for not being able to properly educate the public. Part of that is the fault of the legislature. Not that they intended to do wrong, but our legislature meets every two years. And so we're always behind the eight ball and trying to keep up with new trends in drugs and illegal activity. So that being said, um, penalty group 1A, LSD. LSD was very, very popular years ago. Uh, acid, you know, they call it dots, tabs. But it, it's kind of made a resurgent, uh, you know, resurgent comeback. So what you'll see is, you know, it's put on blotter paper, little square tabs, and then you ingest it somehow. You can eat it however you want to use it. Penalty group two is what we're referring to uh, when we talk about synthetic cathinones or bath salts. Um, you'll see the picture of Pump It in the middle. That's how it was most commonly sold in the Baytown area when I was buying it a few years ago. Um, and then uh, now we're hearing about NBOM or Smiles. Uh, what that is is 25I-NBOME and that is another synthetic drug that has made its rounds and it is similar to or being marketed as similar to LSD. 
uh, but it has uh, some effects that are deadly. But it's ingested in the same way. You can also ingest it in other ways, but the most effective way and the safest way people have found is to orally ingest it on the blotter paper. Penalty group 2A is a new penalty group that was created in uh, 2011, and that was made to encompass what we're calling synthetic cannabinoids, legal weed, kush, scooby snacks, you know, there are as many names as you can think of for synthetic marijuana. The only thing it has in common with marijuana is it's usually green and you smoke it. That's really it because what you're smoking is a purified form of the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana. If you're smoking marijuana, what you're smoking is that chemical which is filtered through the plant matter and, and the natural components that makes up the marijuana plant itself. Whereas the synthetic cannabinoids, you're smoking a purified form of the chemical, so you're getting it anywhere from 10 to 1,000 times stronger than you would if you were smoking a joint. And that's why people are, are, are having the effects that they are. There has been no medical testing done on humans ingesting synthetic cannabinoids. It was not ever intended to be ingested. Um, it was really being used to look at pain management and appetite control for cancer patients in the early 80s. It was invented by a chemist at Clemson University named John Huffman. He has since come out and spoken on this subject. It was never his intention for it to go this route, but uh, somehow in, uh, in Europe they figured out you could ingest this and start having a, a high off of it, and it has since made its way over here. Um, the pictures on here, Kush and Scooby Snacks, are Baytown pictures. These are pictures that I've taken. Uh, these are a couple of the brands that were commonly sold in Baytown that are still being sold in Baytown. Um, but for a while, they were being sold openly in stores. Um, they were being marketed out in the open. And for the most part, I, I would say store-wise, it's not being openly sold. If I were to walk into a store, they're not going to keep it on the counter. Now, if an everyday citizen walks in, they may pull it out from under the counter and deal with you. But if there's somebody of authority there, they're not going to be selling it openly. And there's reasons for that now. So... This is the dry part of the presentation, but it's important because I want everybody to be crystal clear about what it means to be in possessions of synthetics. And I'll speak a lot more in depth on the synthetic marijuana. Um, but we'll start with penalty group 1A, which primarily encompasses LSD. There's a bunch of other chemicals in there, but <coughs> primarily it's LSD. Um, there are two primary classes of, of punishments that you can run into when you deal with drugs. One is the manufacture and delivery of the drug. That's either people making it or selling it. And then there's possession of the drug. So that's usually your average user, you know, depending on, on uh, how they come to be in possession of it. But basically, if you manufacture or deliver LSD, it's a felony. It doesn't matter if it's one tab, it doesn't matter if it's 20 tabs, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, 4,000 tabs. It's a felony. Um, so in the law it says it's a state jail felony if the number of abuse units of the controlled substance is fewer than 20. What an abuse unit is, is a single dose. So a single piece of blotter paper, it could be a ripped off corner. If it has a detectable amount of LSD on it and it's one piece, that's a dosage unit. So if you have one to fewer than 20, so 19 or less, it's a state jail felony. It's not a good thing. Uh, it can put you in prison. Felony second degree is if it's 20 to less than 80. It's a first degree felony, which is 80 to 4,000. So if you have a big sheet of blotter paper or you have a couple sheets and there's 80 squares on it, you could have a first degree felony on your record. And that's one step below a capital crime. That's, that's, that's not a good thing to have. And then if you have more than 4,000, um, it's punishable in TDCJ for life in prison, not more than uh, 99 or less than 15, and a fine not to exceed $250,000, which is a little unusual, um, but they're trying to get a point across that if you're really manufacturing large amounts of this stuff, you can go away for a long time. <clears throat> then we get into possession. Um, all these laws are pulled from the Texas Health and Safety Code. That's what the article I'm referencing on there is. So if you're in possession of LSD or anything in that penalty group, um, it runs basically along the, the same lines, uh, the state jail felony up until the, up until the first degree felony, depending on the dosage units you have. Now, before I go on to penalty group two, a lot of times when people think they have LSD now, what we're finding is it's not LSD, 
is 25i or 25c or 25 whatever in bond. Um, it works in a similar way. The effects can be similar, um, but it's not actually LSD, but they're selling it as LSD. So, in bomb or synthetic cathinones, which are bath salts, are illegal as well. The state law for a while had trouble keeping up with the new chemicals coming out. And so that's why you would, you would hear that, well, bath salts are legal or synthetic weed is legal. It's because the law wasn't able to keep up with the changes in the chemical composition. But that's been pretty much fixed now for the synthetic cathinones, the bath salts, the n bomb. Um, the group that I worked with in Harris County uh, was comprised of some chemists from the different forensic labs, and they have developed language that encompasses pretty much every available chemical structure that can be used to be abused this way. So if you're in possession of bath salts, if you're in possession of n bomb, smiles, whatever you want to call it, 25i, long story short, it's a felony. Whether you're making it and delivering it, it's a felony. Whether you're possessing it, it's a felony. So you can't have it. It doesn't matter if somebody's selling it. It's not legal for you to purchase and buy and possess. And the same thing, you can go to state jail on up by possessing it. So if you have uh, less than a gram of bath salts, and that's not a lot, uh, it's a state jail felony. You know, one gram to four grams, second degree felony. Uh, four grams to 400 grams is a first degree felony. 400 grams on up is the life in prison, 99 to 15, then, or $100,000 fine. Simple possession of the bath salts, like I said, just to reiterate, is a felony. So I want to make sure that that's, that's plain. The law has been fixed. Um, and when we talk about possession, it's not that you have the jar of bath salts. What we look for is the specific chemical components contained in the drug. So we send it off to be tested. Um, chemists, street chemists, uh, we're finding ways to get around the law by changing portions of the chemical composition. This has all been taken care of in this law. Same thing though, if you're in possession of less than a gram, it's a state jail felony, it goes on up the same way. But now most importantly where we're at now is the synthetic cannabinoids, the legal weed, the kush, the spice, the K2, the Scooby Snacks, whatever you want to call it. Um, and in reality there's hundreds of names and it just depends on what geographic area you're in in the U.S. or Texas, what they call it. The problem we have run into over the years is they would change one portion of the chemical formula and so it was a loophole in the law. We couldn't charge you for it. The DA's office would not prosecute. So we started, starting in you know last year, uh, developing a municipal ordinance to cover it, the stores selling it, the people possessing it and making it. Um, that's how I met Amber in, in her group. That's how I've started talking to people. Because cities were trying to figure out how can we control this legal weed that's killing our kids? What can we do? You may smoke it one time. You may smoke it a thousand times and nothing harmful happens to you. But there is no quality control on these products. What you're smoking is something that is manufactured in somebody's living room, somebody's garage, somebody's bathroom. They take potpourri that is unscented. They spray it with whatever specific chemical that's going to get you high, mixed with acetone as a binder, and then they'll spray like cherry flavoring or vanilla flavoring or one I saw a while back, hazelnut flavoring. I don't, I don't know where that comes from. They put it in a baggie after they weigh it out and they sell it. It's turning profit like crazy. I mean, you're, you're making a thousand percent profit from what you're buying and, and what you're selling. It, it's absolutely nuts. Stores were openly selling it um, because of the lack of regulation. And that doesn't just come from the state or the cities. That comes from the feds, too. Um, we all kind of depend on each other to regulate this stuff. So in this past legislative session, we drafted some language that covers, I'm not going to say 100%, but it's going to cover 100% of what is being made. Um, there are definite chemical components that have to be combined uh, that have the cannabinoid effect that will get you high and those are now banned. So if you are in possession, if you manufacture, I'm sorry, if you manufacture or if you deliver or sell synthetics now, it's a felony. So if it's less than a gram, it's a state jail felony. That's the tiniest little bag. 
and it goes on up, you know, one gram to four grams, four grams to 400 grams, 400 grams on up, the felony levels go up. So what I'm, I guess the point I'm trying to get across is this isn't a ticket anymore. This is go to prison. So it, it's a serious thing. But the biggest thing and the biggest help for law enforcement, the biggest thing for the district attorney's office was the fix they put in the law for simple possession. Because as police officers, oftentimes we have to go out with EMS. And I'm not saying jail is the answer for everything because it's not. People who are addicted to this stuff, and make no mistake, synthetic cannabinoids are addictive. Marijuana technically is addictive, but you generally can't smoke it in enough amounts, no matter how hard you try, to, uh, to have the same level of addiction that you run into with the synthetic cannabinoids because of the purity of what you're smoking. So now the simple possession is a Class B misdemeanor. That's county jail. It's not a traffic ticket anymore. It's not go home. It's county jail. So zero to two ounces, and this follows the similar ladder like marijuana possession. Uh, zero to two ounces is a Class B. Uh, two ounces to four ounces is class A, and then if you have four ounces to five pounds, that's a felony. It's a state jail felony. Uh, five pounds to 50 pounds, third degree felony. 50 pounds, 2,000 pounds is a second degree felony, and more than 2,000 pounds, which is a significant amount of uh, synthetic marijuana, is a, a serious first degree felony. So, long story short, law, technical jargon, take it all out of the picture. The laws have been fixed. They're now in place. Um, there are provisions in place for this to be prosecuted, and it's no more get out of jail free card because somebody changes a chemical. Now, if you have synthetic marijuana and you have your glass pipe or however you're smoking it, that's now drug paraphernalia, just like if you had it with weed or whatever you're using. So if you have an empty package of synthetics and you've got a pipe or something with you, that's paraphernalia, it can be treated as such, and that can be anything from a Class C misdemeanor on up, depending on how many times you're arrested in the specific offense. But something else that's important to understand, because a lot of people still smoke synthetics, um, you know, to bypass drug tests, things like that. There are provisions in place now that control um, possessions of the, of the synthetics, the bath salts, and things like that on uh, school campuses including college. So there are enhancements now um, that can get you in even more serious trouble if you're on a, uh, a school campus or within a thousand feet, if you're buying, selling, possessing, using. So where are we at? You know, the synthetics are an increasing problem, and they will be an increasing problem. There's always going to be somebody trying to get ahead. There's always going to be somebody chasing that next new high. But law enforcement, prosecutor, uh, prosecutors, the legislature, we're working to keep up with the problem. I think we have a workable fix. And that encompasses everybody else, too. That encompasses our citizens. That en encompasses treatment providers, counselors, everybody. We all have to work together on it. Um, and that is the only surefire way to make sure that we can take care of each other. So my understanding is there will be a question and answer period after we're done. So if you all have some, let's hold them till then. But in the meantime... Here's my contact information if y'all are interested. Y'all are more than welcome to email me, uh, call me, fax me, if you want to fax me something. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible. I do this all day long, and if I don't know the answer, because I don't know everything in spite of what I tell my wife, um, <laughs> I will find out from somebody who's smarter than I am, and we'll get your question answered. So that's what I have for now. Thank y'all very much. Thank you.